Hey guys, so today I wanted to teach a subject line masterclass unlike I've ever, unlike anything I've seen on the internet, right? This is gonna be the number one rule book when it comes to writing the greatest subject lines uh, on the market, period, okay? Now, first thing I just want you to be aware of, right? And this is like the number one thing to getting opens is that the segment is king, no matter what anyone else says, right? Ultimately, it doesn't matter if your email subject line is like really good. If your list is terrible, then your opens are gonna be low, period, end of story. If your deliverability sucks, period, end of story is gonna suck, right? Like open rates are just not gonna be high. It's kind of like playing tennis against curtains. It's just not a very responsive audience, right? Now, assuming your list is good, and then you follow these best practices, you're gonna be able to get 30%, 50%, open rates, absolutely zero issues, okay? So I'm gonna break this down into uh, certain sections, personalization being the first one, contextualization, uh, and then also just a few other best practices in terms of treating it as a headline, uh, pattern breaking, and also these are some of the like really successful subject line templates that you're gonna find out there, by the way. And also, if you want to download this as a PDF and use it within your own agency, things along those lines, just give me some credit and uh, you'll be able to get that as a PDF if you subscribe to my mailing list, which is gonna bring you a ton of value if you like my content, okay? So let's jump into it. Now, when it comes to personalization, right, everyone knows uh, first names, duh. Okay, here's a few lesser known variables that people don't really talk about. Number one being order number, okay? So using order numbers on anything post-purchase will make email seem way more official and prompt opens at much higher rate, okay? Because obviously everyone's pretty much numb to the first name basis now. And yes, it still works, but you know, just j jazz it up a little, right? There's so many Jameses out there. There's so many, you know, Bobs, Robs, Hobbs, whatever you want to call it, right? That order number is something that's way more unique. And also more importantly, going to the point that I'm going to make it later is pattern breaking. It's a bunch of random numbers and letters, right? It's very pattern breaking. Now, another way of customizing is item sizing. So if you're a fashion brand or something that requires variation with a product, then you can actually use what size they ordered or what product they ordered, what specific variation of the product that they ordered in the past in terms of customizations. And then lastly, this is actually one of my favorites recently, right? Is using last names. Just think about it, right? How powerful is it to say Mr. Zhao? Miss Zhao, I don't know why it would be Miss Zhao, but you get the picture, right? Like Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> that, again, really breaks the pattern. What email are people getting with their surnames and a Mr. in front of it, right? Or like a Lord, a Sir, things along those lines, right? This is where pattern breaking really comes in, and this is why personalization is important, okay? It's a pattern break. Now, next thing, okay? Contextualizing to the segment, again, is really important because there's nothing worse than out-of-context emails, okay? For example, why would you send like a uh, happy Easter when it's not Easter Sunday? I'm recording this on Easter Sunday, by the way, right? So there's nothing worse than sending out of context email. So make sure you're contextualizing to the day, the time, the segment, if it's required. Okay. One thing that I really like to do personally is some people find it creepy. It's, I think it's just a preference, but for me, it works really well. And for my clients, they really enjoy revenue from this is that uh, this is kind of like more so done in the email directly. However, you can do it in the subject line as well if you're concise enough about it. But it's saying things like, hey, we've noticed you've been watching our emails like a hawk and we want to thank you. Here's X percentage off. Okay. So in the subject line, you might say something like, we saw you've been opening a ton of our emails lately. Something along those lines, right? Calling out the segment. And this obviously would be sent to a segment of people where they've opened five emails in the last 30 days. If your sending frequency is eight, then they've opened majority of the emails, right? And then another one would, another variation of this would be in terms of contextualizing it is, hey, this is an email who to people who have or are X, XYZ, you guys are awesome. Here's what we're doing for you guys etc, etc, right? These are like kind of more email ideas, but you can feature this in the subject line as well. So for example, we saw you've bought a medium tea from us recently. That could be the subject line of this email, right? One big common mistake that I see people making is calling everyone on their list a VIP when they're not, right? Not everyone is gonna be a platinum customer of yours. Not everyone is a VIP on your list, right? So, so don't call them out as such because if they're not, and they're not familiar with seeing your sender name and them engaging with them, your emails all the time, they're just gonna think, oh wow, well, obviously I'm not a VIP with this store because I've never bought from them, I've barely opened any of their emails, these guys are a bit shady, right? So make sure you're contextualizing to the segment, and another thing is don't call people, like don't mislabel your uh, people in your list, right? Or try not to. Now, 
Next tip is treat subject lines as headlines, right? So this is one thing that I personally got called out on uh, for by a client and I kind of stopped doing for that account specifically, but I know for a fact this works extremely well because it works in advertising, it works in media, and also it works in emails, right? I've, I've, I've done this uh, enough times to know that this works. Um, however, for super branded accounts, I would definitely avoid this. Now, it's basically the idea of treating the subject line as a headline right? Or like an ad headline or like a news headline or a YouTube video title even, right? The, the concept you guys have to understand is subject lines are the headlines, not the article. The purpose of subject lines is always to optimize for the open and for people to actually click the email to open it up from their inbox, right? It's not to summarize the contents of the actual email, okay? The thing is, sometimes email content is really easy to come up with a good subject line for, in which case you should write that line, uh, you should write the line that gets the open. However, sometimes it's pretty difficult, right? Like if you're coming up with a pretty um, random idea just because it's like an announcement you need to make, right? You just need to write a line that really intrigues and hook the audience enough to get the open. And as long as it's like, somewhat tiny bit related to the actual email content, it's fine because the thing is, it just it just can't affect click intent. As long as it doesn't affect click intent, you're good to go on that front, right? So if that's not making sense to you, which I'm not sure if I explained it in the best way to be honest, but an example I would give is how often do you see a news headline and the uh, and when you click on that headline, the article isn't super relevant to the actual article. Or when you uh, do the same for YouTube videos, you click on the title and then suddenly like the video is about something completely different. However, it got you there, right? And it's basically the same idea when it comes to writing subject lines for email emails, right? It's the the goal is to uh, get people to open, not to summarize the actual email itself. This kind of brings me again to the next point, which is pattern breaking, because a lot of writing subject lines and kind of like hooking people into opening emails, so much of that is just breaking patterns and being extraordinary, right? If you go to your inbox right now, you're gonna find a slew of generic subject lines and you need to break the pattern in order to stand out you might be asking i get this question all the time by the way especially on the cold email side like how the hell do you break patterns in order to stand out well never before have i actually really thought about this but today because i had to shoot this video i really you know sat down and came up with the variables that i look at personally when it comes to breaking patterns okay and it comes down to five different variables okay number one being capitalization <sighs> big mistake i see brands make is that they always use camel casing, right? Camel case is, is basically like, you know, uh, the, the first letter of each word being capitalized. Do not always use camel casing. Sometimes you wanna do all lowercase, sometimes uppercase, you wanna use it sporadically, but never go all caps for the entire subject line because not only is that a spam trigger, but also it just looks like, like why are you shouting, right? So. Make sure you're not camel casing or, or capsing for the entire subject line. And you just wanna, you know, change it up a little bit. Play with the capitalization. You know how uh, there was a meme that was like trending at one point, which was like, uh, when, whenever someone says something stupid, it's like one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter. And one of my theories for that kind of like blowing up was literally just because it was a pattern break, right? Like this looks very awkward. And I can't remember when this study was done or who it was done by, but it, it was like a, a study conducted by a very top, top kind of like Ivy League college where they actually uh, created a very special font that engaged users and made people read for longer periods of time and better retain information. And the whole point of creating that font was basically, basically to introduce a, a certain level of difficulty in terms of reading that font, because it was a font that had like gaps in the letters and things along those lines, which just made it overall a bit harder to read. And in turn, what that did was it made people pay attention, right? So being different and capitalizing it in weird ways uh, could in fact actually boost open rates because it's something that is kind of more difficult for people to read so people pay more attention to it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, because it's a, it's a break in the pattern. And as humans, it's in our psychology to basically look for things that don't follow the normal pattern because we're trying to look for danger. Okay, next variable, number two, length. So length is really a really important thing to change up. You can either go really short or really long. The thing that I don't like to do is to be mediocre. What I mean by mediocre is writing subject lines that are kind of like between uh, 30 to kind of like 50 characters long, right? That's where, where, what I call like the death, death zone. 
right? Nobody really is going to pay attention to that zone because uh, people are getting those kind of subject lines all the time, every single day. If you see a lot of your email, uh, a lot of emails or emails from competitors in particular, right? You should always be subscribed to your competitors' newsletters. Who are using subject lines that are super long, then you want to go super short. If they're using subject lines that are super short, then you want to go super long, right? You want to be the thing that is different. And when it comes to preview text, one thing I like to do in terms of length is uh, juxtapo juxtaposing it. So for example, if I had a super long subject line, like uh, three subject line secrets that your, age, your email marketing agency don't want you to know about. That's obviously a very long subject line. It's, it's definitely too long. But for the preview text of a super long subject line like that, for example, I would go super short, uh, just like, you need to read this, full stop. Something along those lines. And then vice versa, reversing it, right? Now, when it comes to emojis, this is again something that you could use to break patterns, right? If you're in a, if you're in a uh, space that is like super professional, super corporate using some emojis sporadically could actually really help with boosting open rates because um, again, you know, it, it breaks the pattern, right? If all of your competitors are sending these boring um, monotone kind of like subject lines, you sending something and just adding an emoji at the end breaks a pattern and encourages opens, right? An opportunity you might wanna use emojis would be things like when you're emailing, uh, I don't know, VCs to get funding, for example, because I'm, I'm guessing VCs because in the finance industry, their subject lines are super boring. I'm not saying you should do that. I've never emailed a VC personally, <laughs> but when it comes to uh, breaking these patterns, one thing that I see brands do wrong is that they use an emoji at the end of every subject line or at the beginning of every subject line, or even worse, they use the same emoji at the, uh, in their subject lines, right? And I get the idea of it. It's basically to create branding and brand image and things along those lines. However, the thing that it actually creates is patterns. And what patterns create is blindness, okay? Like you get ad blindness. Uh, with, when it comes to personalization, this is another thing that you could do to break patterns. You always wanna be opening with the personalization, right? So if you wanna use first name, last name, or like a, a company name, the best place to per, uh, place that personalization, with the exception of probably like order number, is the beginning of the subject line, right? So yeah, that's that. And then lastly is randomization. So this is kind of the, the last variable that I just put in, not for shits and giggles, but for um, just so that you guys are aware, there's a ton of randomizations you could do just to be different and stand out, right? So one of the like out of the box ideas I have, I haven't tested this on any brand yet, but is to just send an email with a subject line, which is just like a random string of letters uh, or like a random string of numbers, I think. And I think that could work really well just because, you know, it's, it's intriguing because who are, because it looks like a mistake, right? And it's completely random and I think that's gonna work super well. I just haven't thought about like an angle to fully kind of like work that in yet. So that's it in terms of breaking patterns. You have capitalization, length, emojis, opening with personalization and randomization. Let's talk about a few frameworks now that uh, I can give to you guys just as like a little present, right? So that you guys can start writing subject lines without putting in any thoughts behind them just because you have frameworks that other people don't. Uh, and yeah, so these are the successful frameworks I've had in the past. Uh, anything beginning with like RE, forward, something along those lines, they generally perform super well just because you know, it looks like it's from a real person. It looks like it's reaching out with a purpose. Um, so that, yeah, like these two honestly works like a charm. Don't abuse them though. Obviously like, you know, use it maybe once every 10, 15 kind of campaigns. Don't uh, kind of like abuse this because again, if you abuse it, patterns, right? So other ones that I've come up with and <clears throat> the, the idea here is not really for me to give you all of the templates I have, but it's more so to, give you understanding through examples of the kind of templates that work well because they all have commonalities, okay? So first template is time and then result, secret. So what I mean by time is adding some sort of time factor or urgency really helps with building up intrigue, building up interest, peaking, like sparking that initial interest enough for them to actually open the email. Results, because obviously we're always trying to sell the vacation, we're always trying to sell the outcome, we're always trying to sell the transformation, right? And then secret, you could replace this with anything like that they don't want you to know about or anything along those lines which implies secrecy, okay? Or like uh, finally uncovered for the first time, something along those lines, right? So to, to give it uh, concrete examples of this, it would be like, 21 day muscle gain secrets, four hour work week secrets, 
right? You see how by adding like a time component, it not only makes it more believable, but it also makes it more specific. And then you add, attach a result to it and then you attach secret, you know, it really piques interest and it just generally, it works very well, right? So time results and then add the word secret at the end. Second type of framework, number, noun, preventing you from result. So again, number is basically the same thing as time. You wanna sell some urgency, you wanna sell some like uh, conciseness, things along those lines. Uh, the noun is not like, you know, pronouns. It's um, the thing that you are selling or like the, the, the thing that you're talking about, basically. I was going to say just leave it as things, but I thought you guys would need to know that you could basically plug and play this with any noun possible that is relevant and you'd get away with it. Preventing you from X result. This is a really good one because again, you know, the, the thing is psychologically humans feel pain and negativity twice as hard as positive things. So by saying something that's preventing them from getting the, their desired result, it's gonna be way more attractive than if you said, do these four things to get X result, right? Preventing you from getting this, it's, this implies pain. You wanna dig into the pain. Okay. Examples of this would be four things preventing you from clear skin. If you really wanna go specific, you could do like four ingredients in your skincare that's preventing you from clear skin or like acne free skin if you really want to get specific, okay? Next is seven habits that prevent you from earning millions, right? So the earning millions is the outcome, the, uh, the number to make it specific, and then the habits is the, the noun in which you're using, right? Another way of doing this would be like seven habits that's keeping you poor, right? Because poor has a really negative connotation, makes people feel the pain, etc., etc. okay? So, Next is three mindsets preventing you from your dream bod, preventing your dream bod, right? Something along those lines. It's basically like, uh, this, this one's pretty cool if you're talking about like a supplement or like a weight loss program, things along those lines, just because when, when you're saying three mindsets, it's a, again, going back to the other technique of being a pattern break, right? Most people, when it comes to talking about fitness, achieving dream bods, things along those lines, being beach ready, they always talk about like this one workout, this five minute ab routine, right? Whereas you, you go in with something completely left field talking about mindset, right? So this is what I mean again by pattern breaking is super, super important. I hope I'm drilling this into your heads. And then last framework would be result in time or quantity. So scratch, so if you're selling, by the way, so the, the reason I created this is to show you guys that you can use it for many, many niches, right? So if you're pr promoting like a, uh, Phone, phone screen or like a phone case, something along those lines, right? Scratch-free phone screen in three minutes. So the result, because nobody like scratches on their phone screen, right? It depreciates the underlying asset, the underlying tech. It looks horrible. You might cut your fingers on it. And overall, it, like it just looks terrible, right? Everyone wants a scratch-free uh, phone screen in three minutes, but not everyone is willing to take it to the shop, get it fixed and just like apply another screen protector, things along those lines. In three minutes, applies is achievable, very easy. Another subject line that I came up with that I really like, and I'll probably use this in one of my uh, clients' campaigns because it has to do with like green juice and things along those lines, is your five a day in one pill, okay? So this is pretty cool because it's basically, you know, the, the result, everyone knows they're not eating enough vegetables. They're able to get their five a day in one pill. So it basically is like, the getting the result and the benefit of eating all of your vegetables and taking all of the micronutrients. However, rather than need, needing to eat like a kilo of broccoli, you just consume one pill and you're good to go. And then another one would be like a whole new wardrobe for 399. So this is pretty cool because if you're, if you're selling something that is kind of like uh, more on the cost effective side in terms of you're going super mass market and you're uh, making a product that is like affordable to everybody, you could do like your product for X amount, if you have really competitive pricing, that is. So generally speaking, if you wanna buy a whole new wardrobe for yourself, right, it's gonna cost you like 500 bucks, 600 bucks, 700 bucks, if you don't really spend on clothes. If you do spend on clothes, man, like if you wanna buy a designer, it's gonna be a lot of money, right? So a whole new wardrobe for 399 is gonna be a really good deal depending on your target demographic. So yeah, that's it in terms of that. Now, if you want this as like a playbook and get it in PDF format, all you have to do is sign up to my mailing list down below. It's the greatest thing ever. You're gonna get a shit ton of value out of it. And also you're gonna get this PDF for free. And I'm never gonna spam you. I'm most gonna email you like a couple times a week. Uh, and it's always gonna be packed with value. So yeah, why not sign up? Have a good one, guys.